Hi, this is Maggie. In this video, we're going to solve an input processing output programming problem using Python. Before we get started, I'm going to quickly give you some tips for how to get the most out of this video. First, if you have problem solving with Python, read up through chapter 2. If you don't have it, you can still learn a lot from this video. Open up Idle and follow along with Python as I work. Sometimes I'm going to suggest you pause the video and complete some steps on your own. When I do that, pause the video and do your best to complete the steps on your own. The way to learn to program is by programming. You can watch and learn if you work along with me. Remember, you can always pause the video and try something or go back and watch again. You don't have to wait for me to tell you to pause. There are some automated exercises in the description of this video. The exercises work with the same code or similar code to the code in the video. After you've completed the video, try the exercises to cement the concepts in your mind. Now let's get started. Here's the problem we're going to solve. A kennel calculates the amount of raw meat to give a dog based on the dog's ideal adult weight. The weight of the total meal is 3% of the dog's ideal adult weight. Using idle console input and output, the program should ask the user for the dog's ideal adult weight. It should then calculate the weight of the meal and report the weight of the meal to the user. This is an input processing output program using Python console input and output. That means the program gets one or more values from the user via the console, processes the inputs by performing calculations or manipulations on the input, and then displays the results of those calculations or manipulations to the console. You should pause the video, review the program description, and identify what is being input, what processing the program must do, and what is being output. Pause now. How did you do? The program description tells you to ask the user for the dog's ideal adult weight. That means the dog's ideal adult weight is an input. What processing does the program do? It will calculate the weight of the meal based on the dog's ideal adult weight, the input. Specifically, it will multiply the ideal adult weight by 0.03 to obtain the weight of the meal. What is the output? The description says the program should report the weight of the meal to the user. The output is the weight of the meal that the program has calculated. It is very important that we understand the problem we're solving. If you have questions about a problem description, you should ask your client or professor. Sometimes you don't know that you have questions until you think the problem through. One way to think a problem through is by processing some examples. To do that, I will need to come up with a good set of ideal adult dog weights as inputs. I need to understand what range that set of values might include. Could there be negative weights? No, it doesn't make sense to have negative weight. Could zero be a weight? That also doesn't make sense. So the weights are positive, but what are reasonable minimum and maximum weights? The American Kettle Club has a breed weight chart. This is a good authority for a general idea of the range we can expect. Scanning through, I see that the weight for chihuahuas is not exceeding 6 pounds. This tells me that I could expect something lower than 6 pounds, and so perhaps I should expect anything over 0 pounds. Continuing to read, I find that the maximum weight is also somewhat open-ended, although I do see a mastiff breed with a maximum weight of 230. Let's do some sample calculations at 1 pound and at 230 pounds to get a general idea of how the calculations will be done and what sort of minimum and maximum results we might expect. Let's do the calculations using the idle console to give us a good idea of what the results will look like in Python. We can use the idle console like a calculator. So if I have a 1 pound ideal adult weight dog, that dog's meal should weigh 3% of 1 pound. 3% of 1 is 1 times 0.03. So I will type that into idle and press enter, and I get, unsurprisingly, 0.03. What about 230? 230 times 0.03, enter, and I get 6.8999. Lots of 9s, and it rounds off with a 5. What do we learn from this? Well, first, we can see that the result is going to be a floating point value. It will probably be between 0.03 and 7. 
so small numbers where the precision might be important. We can see that we will calculate the weight of the meal by multiplying the dog's ideal adult weight, the value the user gives us, by 0.03. So a formula might look something like dog's weight times 0.03. Do you have any questions? One question leaps immediately to mind for me. Will the dog's ideal adult weight be an integer? I've used 1 and 230, but might it have a decimal, like 6.5? That is a question for the client. Because weight is naturally continuous, in other words, like most measurements of natural quantities, it isn't discrete, you can have decimals. Let's assume that the user can enter a floating point value. You should do as many calculations as you need to explore the full range of input values and get a good understanding of how to calculate the solution. Once we understand the problem well, we can begin implementing a solution. In the problem-solving steps in the text, there are two steps between understanding the problem and implementing a solution. Identifying and clearly expressing solutions, and evaluating and choosing among them. The solution is identified for us in the problem statement, however, using idle console input and output. We haven't learned other ways to implement a problem like this yet, and this problem is designed to help us learn Python. So we'll jump to implementation. I'm going to open a script window in Idle by choosing File, New File, and I'm going to begin by writing some comments that outline the solution. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space at the top, and eventually I'll fill in a doc string and I'll be putting variable annotations there. And I'm going to write pound sign, obtain the dog's ideal adult weight from the user. This comment describes exactly what data I'm going to obtain as it relates to the problem we're solving, and where I'm going to obtain it from. And then I'll leave a blank line to represent where the code will be, and another pound sign, calculate the weight of the dog's meal, and some space, and a pound sign, display the weight of the dog's meal to the user. Okay, that is an outline of our program. How do we get input from the user? We use an input statement. What data type did we decide that input would be when we were working out sample problems? We decided it would be real data, or in Python, float. See if you can annotate a variable to hold the ideal weight of the dog above our first comment. And then below our first comment, write a Python input statement that obtains that value from the user, converts it to a float, and stores it in the variable that you annotated. Pause the video and do that. Pause now. How did you do? Did you test your code? Did you run your program and confirm that it obtains a floating point value from the user? If not, pause the video and do that now. And if there are errors, correct them and test again. Pause now. How did you do? Let's begin by naming and annotating the variable to hold the dog's ideal adult weight. What did you name the variable? Did it follow Python naming rules and conventions, and does it relate the variable to the problem being solved? We can use ideal underscore adult underscore weight, as that is how this quantity is referred to in the problem. Or, as long as we have a name that describes what the variable is referencing, and that distinguishes the quantity from other quantities in the problem, we might shorten it to adult weight or ideal weight, or we might call it dog weight. We might be tempted to shorten it even more to just weight, but that could be confused with the weight of the meal, which we're calculating, and which we will also store in a variable. So I will annotate dog underscore weight, colon, float. And then to obtain that below the comment, dog weight equals float, open paren, input, open paren, open, quote, please enter the dog's ideal adult weight, colon, space, close quote, close paren, close paren. You may have used different text for your prompt, but make sure it clearly tells the user what you expect them to enter. It's very unpleasant to be given unclear instructions in a form asking for input. The function float takes the result of the input function, which is what the user types and is a string, and converts it to a floating point value. To test that, I'll first save the program and then run the program by choosing Run Module from the Run menu, and in the idle console I see the prompt I wrote. 
I'll type in 6.5 to confirm that I will be able to read a real number, or float, and then I see the idle prompt again because that's all my program does. I can examine that variable though. I will type the name of the variable, dog underscore weight, here in the console and press enter, and I see that it holds the value 6.5. I can also type type open paren dog underscore weight close paren and press enter and it tells me it's a float. So my program appears to work so far. Now let's write the code below the next comment which says calculate the weight of the dog's meal. This is what we practiced in the console. We will be multiplying the dog's ideal adult weight by 0.03 and the result will be the weight of the meal. Pause the video and annotate a variable to store the result of that calculation and then write the calculation code and store the result in the variable. Be sure to test your result. Pause now. How did you do? Let's start with the variable annotation. We have a variable called dog underscore weight and to parallel that we can call this variable meal underscore weight although any name that relates the variable to the problem and distinguishes it from other quantities is fine. It is also a floating point value, so we annotate with colon float. The calculations we practiced in idle, and what we did was multiply the dog's weight by 0.03 to get the meal weight. So we can write meal weight equals dog weight times 0.03. This is an assignment statement, so the expression on the right, dog weight times 0.03, is evaluated, and that result is associated with the variable on the left meal weight. We can test this by saving and running the program and confirming that meal weight contains the result that we expect. What meal weight references will be different depending on what the user enters at the prompt for the dog's weight. We need to calculate the results we expect before we test our program, and we should calculate a set of expected results over the full range of dog weight values. Once we know what output to expect, we can test our program. As a quick but not completely thorough example, we can use the values 1, 230, and then if we had previously calculated 6.5, we can use 6.5. Let's calculate the results for 6.5 in the console so we can compare. 6.5 times 0.03, press enter, 0 0.195. And recall we expect 0.03 for the input of 1, and 6.89 repeating for our input of 230. So we will run the program three times by choosing Run Module from the Run menu, or by pressing F5, and we will enter each of our inputs and confirm we calculated meal weight correctly by examining the variable in the console. First one, then examine meal weight, 0.03. Then we run again and 230, and examine meal weight, 6.89 repeating, and then 6.5 and examine meal weight, 0.195. So far, so good. What's the advantage to writing a program this way? Why don't I just write the whole thing and see if it works? If I write it incrementally, one small piece at a time, I can thoroughly test each piece before I proceed. If something doesn't give the correct result, I know I need to look carefully at the small piece of code I just wrote for the error, not the whole program. Okay, now finally we have our comment display the weight of the dog's meal to the user. And we don't have a lot of detail about what that should look like, so we don't know how precise our measurements are or how precise the instrument is that will be measuring the meal, and the precision of the measurements might be different for different inputs. So here we are, almost finished writing our program, and we have another question. That's okay. We should ask the client so we don't make a mistake that could make a dog sick. For example, if we rounded the weight of the meal to the nearest whole number, this might be too much or too little food for a small dog. Remember, our results are pretty small, between 0.03 and 7. Let's say our client asks us to display the result rounded to two decimal places, according to the precision of their scale. So, using Python string formatting, pause the video and write a print statement that will display a statement that looks like the meal for a dog weighing, and then put the dog's weight here. Let's use the example of 230 pound dog because that results in a repeating decimal. So again, the meal for a dog weighing 230 pounds should weigh 6.90 pounds. 
And of course, it should not always say that. It should give the weight of the dog that was input by the user from the dog weight variable and the calculated weight of the meal from the meal weight variable. And of course, test your program. Pause now. How do you do? Let's write this print statement using string formatting. When you write a print statement with string formatting, you can start with print, open paren, open quote, and then write the string that you want for the output, substituting in curly brace pairs for your variables. So we want this to say the meal for a dog weighing, and here's where we want the dog's weight, so I'll put open curly brace, close curly brace. Then LBS pounds should weigh another curly brace pair pounds, and write that just as if the numbers were substituted in, so no extra spaces, exactly the space you expect to see in the result. Then, after the quotation mark, period format, or we say dot format, and then in parentheses after format, the variables in the order we want them substituted into the curly braces. That process of substitution is called interpolation. Then close the parentheses on the print statement. Now if I run this program, I'll see the values without any formatting. So if I run it and enter 230, I get that long, messy result. Going back to the code, I'm going to format the result to two decimal places, as requested by the client. If I want to include formatting, I put, within the curly braces, the format specifier. Well, our second curly braces hold the value that needs to be formatted. So in those curly braces, I put colon and then point to F, which means a floating point value with two numbers to the right of the decimal. Now I'll save and run this again and enter 230, and I get the output my client wants, 6.90. I'll run it two more times with our other test data. With 1, I get 0.03 and with 6.5, I get 0.20. We did not include a doc string in our program, which is a multi-line string at the top of the program that describes what the program does. I'm going to put three double quotes and then a description, obtain an ideal adult dog weight from the user, then calculate and display the appropriate meal weight, and then three more quotes. This form of documentation called a doc string is used in specific places in your program. For now, write a doc string only at the top. Your professor may ask you to include your name and the date, maybe the assignment number, in this doc string as well. You can do that because it can stretch across multiple lines. There's one more thing we can do to improve this program, and that is to use a constant. Constants make programs more readable and easier to modify. When you find yourself using a literal value in a program, particularly a literal numeric value, a constant is usually a better choice. In our program, we're using the literal 0 .03. Let's annotate and define a constant. Meal underscore weight underscore percentage colon float equals 0 .03, and then use the constant name in the calculation. Once you make a change like that, be sure to thoroughly test your program again. Congratulations! You've written a complete input processing output program in Python. I recommend that you close your script window, open a new one, and rewrite the program yourself from scratch. You can also practice with this program in the description box of this YouTube video. There are exercises there. Check back with the video or the program you wrote earlier only if you get into trouble that you can't get out of. Once you've completed that, you're ready to move on to solving your own input processing output problems.